Hey guys, it's Jonathan here from Set Sail. Now, about a year ago, I bought one of these things. An alarm clock. You might remember these from the past. Now, I do have a smartphone which has a clock and it has an alarm clock app, but um, I actually bought this on purpose and I had reasons for doing so. And today, I want to explain three reasons why you should buy an alarm clock. If you want to. I mean, it's up to you, but it makes a catchy title if you say it that way. Reason number one, it gets you out of bed. That might sound incredibly obvious, but for me, I'm really not a morning person and I'm also self-employed, which is a deadly combination. So sometimes I come back and I think, I won't set an alarm tonight because I was out late last night and I really need the rest. I'll just wake up when I wake up. Or sometimes I do set an alarm, but I just hit the snooze button over and over again. But with this alarm clock, I can really discipline myself to get out of bed. One thing I do, and you can do this even if you're using your phone, is to put your alarm on the other side of the room, which means you physically have to get out of bed to go and stop the alarm. Now, if I have been out playing a gig or working late, I might set my alarm a little bit later, but I'm still gonna set the alarm because it's always good to take control of your day. Because as my mum says a lot, the biggest time wasted is the time getting started. Reason number two, having an alarm clock means I can leave my phone downstairs. Why is that such a good thing? Well, I recently watched a talk by a guy called Simon Sinek, and there's a good chance you saw it as well because the video went crazy viral. And he mentioned that he always charges his phone downstairs because he doesn't want to take his phone to bed and be looking at screens right before he goes to sleep. And studies show that it's actually quite hard to get to sleep when you've just been looking at a bright screen. Now a lot of phones and computers have a setting where it dials out some of the blue light as it gets later in the evening because supposedly that light is what keeps us awake. But why not go one step further and not look at any screens just before you go to bed? I recently downloaded this app called Two Bed, so it lets you set the time you want to wake up and how long you want to sleep for, and then it reminds you half an hour before you need to go to bed. So at that point, I try and close my laptop, put my phone on charge, and do something else. For me, as a Christian, I often use that time for praying or reading the Bible, but sometimes I'll just read a book or I'll do some writing, anything that isn't staring at a screen. And I can tell you this, when I don't look at a screen right before bed, I sleep way more gooder. And I'm often getting these ideas and then sitting up at night, working on videos or music or designing things physically to the point where I can't keep my eyes open anymore. I mean, I'm like typing away on my laptop and like drifting off to sleep. That's not a good way to work. <laughs> I might get a lot done that night, but I'll be useless the next day. So instead, when I get those ideas or moments of inspiration late at night, I try and write them down or just capture the idea quickly and then have it as something to look forward to working on tomorrow. Reason number three, I don't want the first thing my eyes see in the morning to be a screen full of notifications. Emails, tweets, calendar entries, all big list of things that I need to do, and that's not a great way to start the day. And here's something I've learned recently. It matters how you start the day. Like, it really matters. And actually, I would go as far as to say that the very first things you do when you wake up set the tone for the rest of the day. When I start my day being faced with a job list and loads of emails, the first thoughts of my day are all the things that I need to do. From the moment I'm awake, my mind's on a to-do list. But if I start the day with prayer or reading the Bible, or even just a bit of space to be quiet, I get the opportunity to set the mood of the day rather than having it set for me. And I can tell the difference when I start my day like that. Even for someone who's not that great in the morning, just 10 minutes of reading a psalm, or reading through a passage, or some mumbly prayer where I forget what I was praying about in the first place is a much better start to the day than just doing this. Even on the really busy days where there's so much stuff to do, it's better to bring those things to God in prayer to the one that can actually give me the strength to do those things than just trying to do it all in my own strength. Now, you may not be a Christian watching this and the idea of starting off your day with prayer might not be that appealing, but there's plenty of good ways to start the day, even just taking a bit of time to be quiet in the morning. Maybe you just get up and make some breakfast before you jump straight into like reading through your phone. Having a bit of space to just think is a really good thing. If you live with your family, maybe it's just a case of saying good morning to your wife or your kids or your parents before you jump straight onto using the internet. However you decide to spend your morning, the point is it matters how you start the day. Anyway, I'm really making this video because I need to hear it myself. Um, if you saw my New Year's resolutions video, you may remember that one of my resolutions was to get a good routine in place. And to be completely honest, I'm still not very good at that. It's still an area of my life that needs a whole lot of work. So I say this as a challenge to you guys, but also to myself, um, especially over the next couple of days, because I'm about to head down to London, and I've got a couple of very early trains to catch, so I'll definitely be needing this. <laughs> so for the rest of this video, I'm going to head off to London, take the camera with me, and bring you guys along for the journey. Enjoy! First stop of the day, I'm heading to King's Cross Station. So I've got a meeting this morning and then another meeting tomorrow morning. 
uh, but the afternoon and evening is free, so I'm just going to go and check out London, see what there is to do uh, in the city, have a look around. So I've already found one big downside to vlogging with the GH5, which is when you're filming with something that big, it's just not quite as discreet. It's a big old camera with a fluffy thing on top, so like vlogging in public is a little bit more awkward, but apart from that, it's all good. Heading back to London again today for meeting number two of this little London trip. Also, check out what came out today, guys. The Spring EP has been released. I started a thing this year where I've been trying to write four EPs for the four seasons of the year. And uh, Winter came out in February. This one's Spring. I'm really happy with how this one came out. It's a kind of hip-hop, chilled, jazz feel. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. It's also got some collaborations on it. Uh, Montel Fish, who I did a feature on his EP on the track Wonderful God. He's kind of returned the favour for a song called In the Ocean. And I also had our friend Lucy Grimble record some vocals for the bridge section at the end of a track called Waterfall. So it's cool to have some friends involved and um, yeah, I'm really happy with this one. So it's out on Bandcamp and it's out on iTunes. I think Spotify is still processing. I mean, I uploaded the EP on Wednesday, so it's only had two days to like <laughs> filter through to digital stores. So it's fine. It should be out on Spotify. Maybe by the time this video comes out. I don't know. Anyway, time to go to London. Alright, look who's arrived. Hello. <laughs> um, Nathan's made it down to London for day two. Just done our second meeting um, with some friends of ours. And uh, now we're heading over to the YouTube space in London. Well, obviously in London, in King's Cross. I'm intrigued, I've never been. Yeah, should be fun. I'm gonna catch up with some emails and sort some stuff out for the America trip. USA! America. USA! 